In this video, we're going to talk about Hylion, trading under the ticker symbol HYLN. We're going to cover the price action over the past few days, the company itself, and the recommendations regarding buying, holding, or selling the shares. If you would like to see more stock analysis videos, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. But before today's video begins, I'd just like to clarify a few things about the timing when my videos are recorded, uploaded, and how much they react to the latest market updates. Those are prepared, recorded on the day before and scheduled for the next day. If there are significant and volatile movements during the trading day, they will not be reflected in the video itself. With that being said, to the extent possible, my analysis will be based on the medium term or even the long term and not necessarily on the intraday movements. The main reason why it shouldn't matter that much is because most people investing in stocks or even just trading in and out of their positions usually keep their positions open for at least a few weeks. With that being said, if there are significant movements in the stock price that happens afterwards, Either they will not affect the overall picture, so in that case, we will cover them the next time we're supposed to cover them, or if they are significant enough that they change the outlooks, then yes, I will do a follow-up video in the shortest delay possible with a re-evaluation of what I think should happen next. Hylion is a startup company operating in the electric vehicle sector, funded by founded by Thomas Healy in Cedar Park, Texas. It specializes in the electrification of long-haul trucks, and what separates the company from other EV startups is that other than the fully electric vehicles that it is developing, Hylion is also proposing to install an add-on to existing fleet of trucking companies so that they can benefit from alternative energy resources and generation other than the combustion engines. Hylion has been one of the more popular EV companies back in 2020 and attracted a lot of retail traders to buy the company's shares. So far, Hylion has been able to stay away from negative news that some companies fell into. And as a result, the reputation of the company remained mostly intact independently from what the company stock has been doing. The market cap of Hylion is currently at $1.08 billion and the enterprise value is at $1.03 billion. The market cap is the price tag financial market wants to evaluate highly on at, considering its future potentials and current fundamentals. The enterprise value of the company, also called EV, is the net result of the company's assets when all the debts are paid off. Usually, the market cap is higher than the EV, but sometimes there may be exceptions because the company may be highly leveraged or under selling pressure because of short positions. The quick ratio of Hylion is currently 27.53. The current ratio is 27.53 as well. And the debt over equity is 0.02. In other words, it doesn't really have that much debt. The average trading volume of Hylion has been 2.7 million shares and the daily volumes recently have been 1.7 million shares, 2.5 million shares, and 2.6 million shares. The one-year beta of Hylion is 1.36. Its 52-week high is $22.25, and its 52-week low is $5.63. Now, let's also talk about the options market for Hylion. In terms of volume and open interest, the options market is favoring an evenly distributed situation. So in other words, there seems to be a lot of calls and a lot of put on both sides. Generally speaking, put options suggest that the market believes a pullback is imminent, and a calls options mean that the market expects the prices to move up. The key strike prices where there seems to be the most interest are $4, $6.50, and $7. Hylion has been continuing its downward grind over the past few weeks, and although this tendency has slowed down somewhat, it didn't really stop. 
The reasons are fairly simple as well. The entire sector is having somewhat of a flat moment, except for a few key companies in the sectors like Tesla and Lucid, which we will come back a bit later on. The entire sector has been viewed as one, and very often the company stocks would move up or down together. So far, what the price action trends over the past few weeks have been showing us is that market participants are finding more lucrative niches to put their money into, or shall I say more compelling niches to put their money into, or more risk-adjusted ones than the EV sector. Also, Hylion is having some difficulties in terms of timeline of its ongoing projects, mostly because of shortages of key components around the world. We've talked about how the entire sector is a bit flat at the moment, except for Tesla and Lucid. And this is because those two companies have their specific fundamentals linked to them, like new products going live or better capabilities of new vehicles, and so on. Like new products going live, or better capabilities of new vehicles, and so on. Hylion is still developing its electric trucks and expecting to be going live during the fourth quarter of 2021, probably delayed at the current stage. So overall, I think that Hylion deserves a look from investors who eventually want to build a balanced EV portfolio it has a good reputation, its products seem promising, and the company is not affected by the lowering prices. By that I mean the operations of the company are not affected by the stock price. I would recommend to eventually build up a position that is approximately 1% of your portfolio, with around 20% of your allocation bought now. In this current market environment, I believe that we should be careful about taking positions and risk in the financial market in general, and in the equity market in particular. Because over the past decade or so, the financial market has been living with the help of newly created capital from QEs, resulting in a massive increase of asset prices and the corresponding decrease in their yields. And the low interest rate also contributed to reinforce this phenomenon because the financial sector would see its profit margins reduced and in turn keeps the returns of other sectors and employees low as well. At the same time, the market doesn't represent the real economy, and the real economy doesn't get reflected in the price of different securities. The market is a game of supply and demand, which will depend on a number of factors, not just the fundamentals. If the asset prices only depend on the fundamentals, then their performances in the Northern Hemisphere would have been more than mediocre because things have been mostly stagnant over the years. A few things can explain why asset prices managed to remain high despite the stagnation of the underlying businesses. The first one is that over the years, there has been more money printed by different central banks to support their own economies. But because that money is distributed to banks and expected to loan to businesses to create more jobs, and that, in fact, there aren't that many opportunities out there. This money became capital that travels around the world and went into the huge financial melting pot. The QEs are now wrapping up in many countries, so I don't think that it'll remain as the main driving force over the next couple of years to keep the asset prices up. But it's compensated by the arrival of new capital from different regions to North America because it's perceived as a safe haven for investors. With the rising tensions around the world, this capital inflow will probably be sustained over the next couple of years, if not intensifying. The last phenomenon is the creation of artificial bubbles that are either supported by real market trends or completely fictional ones to allow market participants to play the game of hot potato and to either create profits or to safe keep their capital. The EV sector back in 2020 is an excellent example of this. But nevertheless, what it means for the market is that 
the degree of uncertainty is probably going to increase over the foreseeable future as the expectation for a recession has been building up for more than a decade and that the economic difficulties are accumulating around the world, especially from Asia. What this means for the market and for us is that the volatility is supposed to increase over time, which will provide opportunities to make a profit or to incur losses, depending on the timing and risk management. Another thing to note for this period of time is that we have to be very careful about having shorts. It's already riskier than having longs because the losses of shorts are not limited, right? Because there's no limit in terms of how far the stock can increase. But with the increased involvement of short sellers, I believe that the stocks been shorted will have an even higher probability of getting squeezed, which will result in potentially massive losses. So we're also like observing more of an irrational behavior from market participants in the sense that very often people will choose to rush in a position, not necessarily because the fundamentals are convincing, but because there's a buildup of demand in a specific stock and people will pile in to ride the gravy train with the rest of us. That kind of behavior is highly risky and may result in losses. It's worth pointing out that in 2020 and probably in 2021, the market has never presented that many opportunities. But it was also during that same period of time that many retail traders have incurred their biggest losses. A rule of thumb is that each position should be structured so that even if they don't succeed, they don't impact the portfolio stability. Positions should begin small so that there is an opportunity to average down later. And specifically for the growth stocks, I think that 5 to 10% overall should be a healthy weight for the portfolio. And each stock should represent about 1 to like 3% of the positions. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel.